spend some time in prayer. Just close your eyes and just seek the face of God. Seeking the face of God. Last Friday I was talking about seeking the face of God. The demand of seeking is completely abandoning what you're holding. The demand of seeking is to let go of whatever you think you believe, whatever you think is right. Abandoning all that we wanted, all that what we think is right, all that about us. We must learn to abandon. Seek the face of God. The face of God is the truth. It's the truth. In order to, see, in order to pursue the truth, means who God is, one must release everything, empty ourselves completely. We must learn to empty. We are not holding on to anything. We must check every step of our, in this, in this life, every step that we take. We must learn to abort and abandon all that, what we wanted and to pursue the face of God, to pursue the truth. Because there's no peace in this world. Peace is only found in Christ. There's no hope in this world, for hope is only found in Christ. There's no forgiveness in this world. That forgiveness comes from Christ. There's nothing good in this world. There's nothing good in this world. The goodness of God is found in His righteousness, in the righteousness of Christ. Our journey is short. Our journey is short. Our lives have been planned. Our lives have been planned by God. And the purpose of our life is to reveal who God is. The only purpose we have is to magnify or reveal this God through the life, the time that God has given us, the time within the economy of life has been given or added to us, is to manifest this unseen God. I don't find any other reason for us to be alive, to be, to be in this life in the earth. It's not for us to work for money, find money, get into relationships up and down, the struggles, all that brutality. Everybody have to go through all these things. Everybody must come through all this. That's what we call journey. In journey, we'll go through all these challenges that we don't understand. We run after everything. And when we achieve something in this world, we feel that we have achieved, achieved something. But the truth is we have nothing. And that's more important for us to come to a, a realization, opening of eye, that we must come to understand that there's nothing in this life. I'm saying this from my spirit, from my heart. There's nothing in this life. The one thing there's one thing that we need to pursue is pursue Him and His life. <clears throat> when we find His life, His life provides purpose for us. There, there is purpose in the life of God. Anyone who does not have the life of God does not have a purpose. And the purpose for mankind is to reveal this unseen God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the one and only name. <clears throat> we gathered here not to fulfill our religious obligation. I know you are listening to us. I know you are here. I know you are here in this place. I know that. Like every other day, we always know that you're always with us, but now I want to re-emphasize, I know and we know you are here today. But we are not here to fulfill our oblig religious obligation. We are not coming here because someone will call and look for us, why are you not coming to church? 
We're not coming here because we feel like we are, we are sinners and we need the word of God. We are not coming here for any other reason. We are here because we love your word. We love your word. You are the word. You are the word. We are trying to build this relationship right with you. For we do not understand what is relationship. We are all failures in relationship. We are all failures in relationship because we have failed to understand your relationship, Lord. We, don't un- we have failed to understand your relationship. <clears throat> While we are running about trying to establish every other relationship, we have failed to understand your relationship, your love that was transferred into us. And that is why we are found weary. We feel so dry, drought, like in a land of, uh, uh, a land of drought. Because we don't understand this. And that is why we are coming here. We are coming here to relate with you, to find you, to, to find, to understand, to learn more how to love you and nothing else. You deserve the best, Lord. You deserve the best from our lives. We can't give the crumbs in this relationship to you. So we want to give ourselves completely to you. I know you're listening to our hearts right now. All our hearts. All those who are listening. All those who are far. All those who are weary. All those who are down. All those who are suffering all those who are lost, all those who are broken, all of us are listening. All those who are rebelling against the truth, we are listening. We are communicating with you. We understand that you are here. And I know that we know that you are listening to our hearts. Even in our ugliness, that nature that we carry within us mocks at your holiness. Some of us carry such a nature and behavior in us even in that condition, you are still listening to us. You are still hearing our hearts. For you have loved us unconditionally. Or you you love us unconditionally. You have proven to us you will come all the way to redeem us. So we stand here as a company of people or remnants returning back to our Father. Repentance, getting our minds sorted out, getting our minds sorted out according to your holy scripture, that our mind will be set according to your word, that our spirit, soul, and body will only will honor your name and nothing else. That we become the temple of God, Holy Spirit. Come and dwell today especially. I need you. We need you to come and touch each and every one of us in this place. We need you to touch our mind. We need you to touch our mind. And we lift up the names of all those who are suffering, battling because of the mental state that you will touch the mind of those today so that the eyes will be open, spiritual eyes will be open to see your word through. To see through your word, to see the intent, your intent through reading of your word. Give us the access to see who you are. Give us the access to understand your heart. Give us the access to understand your mystery, Father. Because we will perish if we don't have the access to see the mysteries of Christ. So I very humbly, Lord, asking of your help to open up our eyes, to touch our mind, 
touch our environments, touch all our decisions, touch all our struggles, our weaknesses, touch our strengths, touch every aspect in us needed to be corrected and repented so that we can reveal who you are to this world. If not, we will fail this mission. We will fail this mission. We need you to touch us, Holy Spirit. Come and move in this place. Move within our spirit. Move within our dimension, dimensions of spirit, soul, and body, which you have given to us. Our spirit, soul, and body is not an alien to you. You created it. You gave us so that we can become your house. Your house. I speak grace to transfer, be transferred into all of us today. As we are learning, your grace is to enable us to become sons of God. The power of your grace is to enable the Son in us. The power of your Holy Spirit is to establish us to be a son in Christ. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to announce our sonship in Christ in the earth. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to mold us to be a son in the word. So Father, I declare your name I declare your name. I declare your name in this place. I declare your name in the mind of each and every one of us. I declare your name in the spirit, soul, and body. I declare your name in, within our lives, in every sphere of our life. Declare your name. Your name is above every other name. Your name is being exalted through the body of Christ. Your name is to be exalted all over the world. For you are one and only. There's none like you, Father. So we celebrate your name, we exalt your name, we bless your name, we declare your name, we accept your name, we submit to your name, we embrace your name. We love your name. We have nothing in this life without your name. We need your name. Your name. Your name. In us. Your name in us. We need your name to be in us. So that we could be declared as sons of God. So we thank you, Father. We lift up each and every sons of this house. Whatever battles or challenges they are going through, Lord, we believe every challenges that come through us have to come through you first. So the lives of the sons in this house is to produce work, to produce, to present the Christ to the world. I bless them, Father. I bless the true spiritual sons of this house. I bless them that they will see a greater blessing today. Tomorrow will be a powerful day for these sons who are devoting their journey, their life, who are seeking your face. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that you will touch their lives and their environments and create new atmosphere for them to smell, to breathe the breath, to breathe your breath, to breathe that air, that fresh breath of yours, that the sons will live the life of Christ in the earth. In the midst of all forms of challenges, they will learn to exalt your name. And I pray many more who are coming to our meetings, our gathering, many more who are coming to the word of God will become sons of God.
in Christ, sons of God, in the order of Christ. So I lift up this day into your mighty hands. I commit all those who are not here, all those who are unable to make it, all those who are going through battles, whatever challenges, Lord. I speak grace, peace and favour over wherever they are right now. Touch them, Father. Touch them. Let there be awakening in their spirit. An awakening in their spirit. An awakening in their spirit for them to realise that they have been created in the image of this one God. That they will rise up from that bed. Pick up that bed and they start to walk. No more excuses. So I declare your sovereignty over our families, our life, and every place that we dwell. Let your sovereign hand be upon all of us. We pray for this nation, that this nation will go through a shift, that true houses will be established True houses will be established. True sons will now be revealed to be manifested in this nation. We are looking forward for the day, Lord. I'm looking forward for the day that many will come and return back to the world to take a look at the world. So we thank you, Father. We thank you. Continue to dwell in our spirit. Continue to reconstruct our soul. Continue to prepare this body to become your temple. So we declare your name in the lives of your people. And we thank you. Thank you, Father. In that one and only name, Amen. Amen. Let's prepare for the scripture reading. Uh, at this point of time, I just want to thank God uh, for giving me such a good family, brothers, brethren in Christ, who have been uh, uh, very helpful. Uh, and then... Um, really likes to, you know, where we walking in a journey in agreement with my brethren. Why am I saying is that? Because if one cannot walk in agreement with another brother, that journey will be a very rough journey. It's going to be a very rough journey. Because at the end of the day, we will have uh, one mind and the person next to us will have a different mindset. And then we will somehow one has to compromise just to fit in into another person's mindset or the other person like vice versa. So we need to have an agreement uh, with one another. And of course, when we have an agreement with one another, the journey will be perfected in Christ. So I I really this at this point of time I really want to thank God that I have one brethren I have only one brothers it's not about how many of of you all here all of us are in agreement with the mind of Christ as I am also in agreement have an agreement with the mind of Christ so in that in that context we are all one we are the body of Christ so I'm very happy to see each one of you here, despite of uh, problems, chaos and mess, we still come here and gather, not because of our own strength, it is because of the divine strength that comes upon, to us, upon us. If not, if not, uh, it's never going to happen that we will come here and end up here and reading and, or maybe listening to God's word. We are not listening to man's word, we are listening to God's word, which comes through the man of God. 
I would just want to say each one of you here are the man of God despite of our weaknesses God knew God knew that we will fall but he would give give his hand and then he would put us in himself so with that let me go to my scripture reading uh colossians chapter 3 If then you were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand right hand of God set your mind on things above not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with with Christ in God When Christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory therefore put to death your members which are on the earth fornication uncleanness passion evil desire and covetousness which is idolatry because of these things the wrath of god is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them but now you yourselves are to put off all this anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your mouth do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither greek nor jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian sectarian slave nor free or free by Christ is all and in all therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved put on tender mercies kindness humility meekness long suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another if any one has a complaint against another even as Christ forgave you so you also must do but above all these things put on love which is the bond of perfection and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord and whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him i would just stop here so this chapter is really straightforward what was the scripture saying that if the word did not appear when it was the word is if if we you and i were raised with christ we will seek the things above like what how uh pastor has mentioned and the scripture also mentioned that seek the kingdom first letting go we have to let go the things that we have been carrying is like a baggage it's going to be too heavy when we are pursuing th- the divine things of god we have to let go all the things that we are carrying from our past we just need to drop our luggage because that could actually uh distract you when you and i are on the journey with god in christ and set your mind on things above the problem here is how do we set our mi- our minds above we have a sight problem we could not see the sight and how do we so now each one of us can ask we we can ask ourselves how do we see how do we see the scripture says that where your treasure is your heart is there so where is our treasure let me give an example let's say you want to buy a car and that's your treasure what are the things that we will do just to get the car 
there are certain requirements criteria for us to buy a car like we need to have uh, good salary we need to have that kind of funds to buy the car so we work towards that but do we know what are the things that Christ has in his mind the intent of God it's very difficult to understand the intent of God if you are still living as an earthly person here on earth it's very difficult we our life will contradict his intention what he wants to bring on earth and you going to verse 5 therefore put to death your members how do we do that how do we put to death the members not just by stopping we are to put to death the members by pursuing the righteousness of Christ not doing anything is one thing but doing the right thing meaning when when we are pursuing the righteousness of Christ we will somehow we will drop away we, the, the the thing will will no more be part of our life those things in the past because we are pursuing the righteousness of Christ and verse 15 let the peace of god rule in your hearts so many times in this house uh, we have uh, break the word heart heart means mind but we have to allow this mind to receive the things of god so that the peace of god will rule our hearts the peace of god will not force in us will not be forced in us we need to allow the peace of christ what do you mean by allow by practicing not just theoretically lingering in our minds but we also need to perform them and that's where we will have an agreement that means we need to agree whatever god says that's why we say amen because whatever god says we agree but the natural man does not agree so when we say agree when we say amen is the spirit man in us saying agreeing to it hallelujah so we need to allow our mind to receive the things of god so the the peace of god will rule our rule over our life the christian life is not so difficult obeying god actually is not so difficult is it's a choice that given to us like how uh, uh, a choice was given to adam and each choices has consequences whether yes or no each also have to we have to pay for the consequences so we need to examine ourselves examine our life what are the things that we are really looking forward uh, our eyes fixed and 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 locked into the material things of this world or to the things of Christ are we pursuing the the, the righteousness of Christ these are the questions that we each one of us have to ask ourselves we have to ask this if you are really going pursuing coming aggressively to pursue the righteousness of Christ so with this uh, i pass the mic to pastor michael thank you good afternoon everyone good afternoon and thank you for being faithful to the word of god thank you for i'm always grateful to each and every one of you who have been grateful to the word of god and those who are working and laboring and toiling in the word of god uh, even in the midst of many challenges um even the we are fighting against an enemy that we can't see we fighting against a system that overrides everything that you try to establish every time that you try to do something good um you look it feels like your enemy is more stronger than god but it's not the truth the enemy is not even closer to god the enemy does not have a strength you know enemy does not have strength do you know the enemy doesn't have strength do you know that satan does not have any power all power has been given to us jesus said all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me jesus the word and then he said go therefore and he gave the power to the body the church the purpose the devil pursuing you because you have the power so in order to for him to put his hands in your pocket and take that power he need to play with your mind that's how drugs work 
if you go to a club in some countries or even in Singapore, they will put drugs, tablets in your drink to seduce you, to confuse you. The moment they put the tablet in, you're no longer that person, you become very vulnerable and those who drug you will have the power over your life. Immediately you give the power to the person whom the one who drugs you. You get the picture? See the picture? Anyone who says something to you, a lie, who come and say a lie to you, has the power to control your life because the moment you believe a lie, you give your power to them. The devil's strategy is very simple. The devil's strategy is to bring a lie to your mind against your heavenly father, against how he has crafted you, against the truth. He plays a lie in your mind and the moment you accept the lies, what happens? You give your power to the enemy. The devil doesn't have any power. He will have power over your life when you give power to your enemy. You understand? So all those who are laboring to stand in the truth, all those who are standing in the truth in the midst of all forms of challenges, I truly appreciate your standings. I truly recognize, I believe heaven recognizes. So keep up the good fight. Keep up the good fight. Don't quit. Don't look at the world. If you look at the world, it, look, it will look like the world is more powerful and you're losing the battle. No, the world has got no power. Who has the power? The body of Christ has the power. You have the power through the word of God. The devil can put lies in your mind. But if your mind is filled with the truth, then these lies won't work. Say amen. amen. That is why you come regularly to this place. We place the truth, the truth in your mind so that the enemy will come and say the house has been occupied, he leaves. A thief will enter the house only when there's nobody in the house. If there's people in the house, the enemies don't enter. If your mind is filled and occupied with the word of God, the enemy can never penetrate or enter. He might just lurk around you, waiting for the time for, for you to sleep. Sleep speaks about unable to capture doctrine, unable to capture the truth. Sleep. We have that kind of a mind. So we have the power, God has given us the power. The power God has given us is the word of God. Anyone eats the word of God, dwell in the word of God, you have power and authority with the enemy, have to bow down at your feet. Say Amen. I want you to understand these formulas. The enemy cannot just enter you. The enemy can only enter you when there's lack of word. When there's no word. People can interfere in your life, in your marriage, in whatever that you're building, only when you don't know what you're doing, you don't have the truth. And you start to believe all the lies. We have the truth, we believe the truth and nothing but the truth, amen? So we are that company, we are that people, we are going on that journey. We don't live by this side, we don't live by this side. You don't judge everything by this side. You live by the word. You live by the word of God. You can't live by what you hear from this world. You've got to live by every revelation of the word of God. You understand that? You've got to learn to live and build your life with every revelations that come through the word of God. And then today, if I give you a revelation, I'm going to give you some revelations later on. You must pick the revelation and then go and build your life based on the revelation. It's a very long process, but it is an established process. Heaven recognizes. You can't build anything in this world without the truth. Amen? Anyway, we had a very good scripture on... I just want to look at one portion, just want to bring it to you. Uh, this portion. 12. We read about all that uh, nature that will break us. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved... Now, this is our status God gave us. Who are we? We are the elect of God. Election, elected leader, elected minister, elected president, election. Elected means chosen, qualified. Qualified, the word elect is not the word like what you choose. The word elect is you will be tested and proven to be elected. 
So when the, when you use the word elect, means this whatever you elect has been tested and proven, and then you put in front and say, "This is my elected leader." So therefore, as the elect of God, elect of God, we have been qualified by the Spirit of God to represent God to one another and to this fallen world. Amen. You can say amen for that. Amen. When you must say amen. When I, whatever I say is in line with the word of God, you can agree. Yes, it is the word of God. Amen. So therefore, as the elect of God, holy, set apart, sacred, and beloved. The word be loved means you are God's favorite. You will see that you are favored by God. You will see the hands of God in the midst of all the chaos chaoses that you go through, all the mess that you go through, all the things that enemies bring into your life, you will still see God's hand upon this person. No matter the whole world can come against that person, you will see the hands of God upon that person. And your enemies cannot deny and they themselves will witness, is it possible? Those are the people, beloved, God's beloved. Because they love the word of God. If you are the beloved of God, means you love the word of? Say louder. You, you have the love for the word of God. You are beloved. Nobody can love this word. You can love your dogs. You can love your, your pets. You can love your birds. You can love your job. You can love your car. You can love all that stuff. We only know how to love all that. But the day you learn to love the word of God, you are beloved of God. I want you to teach your little children when you have kids, you are beloved of God. Means you are telling your child, I'll teach you how to love the word of God. Amen? So, the holy and beloved, beloved put on tender mercies. Now this is what we don't have. We are very quick to judge people. We want to pass quick judgment and we think the moment you think when you are right, if your right is wrong, you're going to judge people based on that wrong. Can, do you understand what I just said? Most of the time, all of us here individually, we have different mind. Each of us got our own righteousness, self-righteousness, and you believe this is how things must be done. For example, making a cup of coffee I tell you, all of you in this room have got different style of making coffee. I'm the one who's suffering. Because everyone, every time someone else makes my coffee, it is different. It's not the same. So sometimes I have to call those who really know how I like my coffee. In order for me to really, I want to have my coffee, I'll just call, uh, Alvina, can you make for me my coffee? Alvina already come to the place of, she knows what's the requirement of my coffee. But each of us got different way of doing a coffee. And your way is right to you. This is how I make. So from that vantage point, another person's coffee could be wrong to you. That's not the way to do. You know why? Because what you have been doing is right to you. So anyone who made even a perfect and a more qualified coffee to you, huh? sorry, it's, not, it's wrong. I will make my own coffee. Because of this, we are making a lot of drastic mistakes. Kalyano na ida kalyano. Purse na ida purse. Yar sona. Your mind. You learn from Sun TV, Moon TV, All TV. You learn from your Tata, Party, Appa, Amma, in the Kurumo, Aunga, Yunga, Uncle, Auntie. You learn, and then a society, Facebook, media talking about men must be like that. A lot of women I saw, they're putting a lot of canvas thing or posters or some others, so-called word of wisdom. Uh, a man must be this. Yeah, so say, say, say who? Say who? A wife must be like that. Say who? Where are you getting all these facts from? A woman says that I need a man who loves me, who cares me, who carries me, who covers me. Ideas and yes, that's there's so much, not possible. 
So, yenge do the chinna requirement? That's not the role of the man. A woman must do this, must do that. To ni toy kuno, it say no. To you know lah, all this stuff. Sinjie sathi birwa. Apa dila say kora da pastor? I have to speak some Tamil because I have some followers from Malaysia. The Tamil le pesna anglo velam analda. I'm trying to. I'm putting a bit of Tamil inside. We can't just only go English. I don't know what God is doing with me. I'm so messed up. Uh, so bear with me. And I know you will enjoy the Tamil more, right? So where you get that from? A male must be like that. A female must be like that. And this is based on the culture of your family or your friends. The people you mix with have more power over your decisions than the Word of God. I need you to write this on the canvas. Do a poster. The people you mix with have the power to uh, alter your decisions than the word of God. They can. These people and media, the people you mix with, uh, all that platforms that you spend time with more teaches you more than the word of God. Ninety-nine percent of your principles are altered by the. What you spend more time with? Why you don't spend more time with the word? Only the word is perfect. Only the word is perfect. But we spend more time. You can take your iPhone and check how much time you spend on social media in a day. It will show you how much time you spend time on WhatsApp, Facebook, D. It will show you. And there's a Bible app in your phone. Go and check. It will the bar will be very low. You're not using a Bible in your phone. You're looking for. We are looking for things that will what sustain us. You're looking for things that make you feel good. You feel that. But even if that is poison, you do not know, because this is what you have learned and you accept. The truth is bitter. So who told that a man must be like that, woman must be like that, office na apdi irukno, church na apdi irukno? Where are you getting your facts? Most of the facts that you have in your mind is crafted by your own environment and you. I can tell you boldly, most of it is wrong. It's not a way, not according to how God sees. That's my point. I'm trying to say, not according to God's way. So what we must do, we cannot judge anything. உங்க லைஃப்ல இருக்கிற காரியங்களை குடும்பம் வாழ்க்கை பணம் படிப்பு பதிவு இது எல்லாம் என் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் என்வாயர்மெண்ட்ஸ் தட் யூ என்டர் யூ கேன் நாட் கோ த அண்ட் சி ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் த எடுகேஷனல் த எடுகேஷன் வேர்ல்டு இருக்குல்ல யூ கேனாட் சி அக்கார்டிங் டு வாட் த மார்க்கெட் டீச்சர்ஸ் யூ யூ மஸ்ட் ஸ்டேன் ஃப்ரம் த வேர்ட் ஆஃப் காட் அண்ட் லுக் அட் வாட் இஸ் எடுகேஷன் வாட் இஸ் மேரேஜ் வாட் இஸ் ஃபைனான்ஸ் அண்ட் தட்ஸ் ஆர் யூ ரீ அட்ஜஸ்ட் யூர் மைண்ட் right why why i'm saying this because put on tender mercies i say you don't have mercy we don't know what is mercy we are very quick to judge everything according to our own mind and you come to find out your mind is already messed up you don't know what is right there are some games that you can play and try to work get your mind sorted out you know you sit down and what your mind says what you see is like simple games like charade Charade, right? We all play. Try to play more of it, because what you're trying to, what you see, and what you try to express, what they will say will be completely different. Correct <laughs> or That's a mind game, and you try. Some of you, you give up, and that's the life of a pastor, a spiritual leader. I read and trying to express the spirit of Christ. Most of you don't understand of it. You take what you did, and then you start to, what you say. according to your understanding becomes your treasure are you with me try and play charade today when you go back home with your family see what happens be the person who trying to interpret what is written jesus was doing that in the book of john and that so sad and i was reading again and again and again jesus biggest battle was trying to explain to the people how things have been said in his mind and they could not understand so We don't understand tender mercies. Kindness, kindness, kindness is not related to the lion courtesy. 
Because that's what we learn in our school. Lion, kindness, we see the courtesy lion. No. Kindness is, kindness is a, a economy of God. Why we need to be kind with somebody? Why we need to be kind? Do you know why? Because nothing is perfect. No one is perfect. When you realize when no one is perfect, so what is needed? Tell me, what do you need? What is needed? Mercy, tender mercy, kindness. You need to be, because we always feel we are perfect and we start to attack everyone. The moment you realize that you are not perfect, you need Christ. Then you will understand tender mercies, kindness. Are you with me? Humility and meekness. We don't understand uh, these two. What is humility? Parole. Parole. I think very humility. What did I explain? What did I taught you guys? Can you remember what is being humble? Good boy. <laughs> First time I'm getting back. Every time I ask you what you guys, what I taught you, you all forget. Being humble means stepping out of who you are, stepping into who Christ is. Is being humble. God have not taught us to be stupid or, or being a, a senseless person or idiotic, the word. No. The word humility is not giving in to everything. The word humility is you step out of who you are. That's ego. Step out of who you are. Step into who Christ is. That's, is that is pure humility. Because no one can step out from who they are to enter Christ. Because there's a heavier demand in Christ for self to die. It is not humility. I'm practicing and I love that. It's difficult. I want to step out from who I am. Most of the situation, I want to take a decision and do what according to my understanding. But when I say, no, not you, but I will do what is right before the Lord. That will not please people. But when you start to do that, heaven declares you as the humble one. Amen? Meekness. How many of you know meekness? What is meekness? The word meekness means controlled strength. Controlled strength. A boxer, qualified fighter standing. A young boy go and challenge this boxer. And then this boy trying to provoke him and all that. But this boxer trying to avoid and just walk away. Because this boy don't know that this guy is a boxer. So he's trying to use his gangsterism and try to... Today a lot of gangsters are like that. A lot of gangsters out there, they think they can beat everyone. They just give you a... But there are a lot of young boys who are better fighters now. They don't know. But you know, a lot of younger boys now who are real fighters, are, they just walk away. You know why? <laughs> That's meekness. Do you know when you go and learn martial art and boxing and all that stuff, one of the demand in the class is your, you cannot use this weapon as you like, as you wish. That today a lot of guys are going for boxing class and then Kaya two kids they walk. Because they think they can fight. That's not meekness. A true meekness is when you have the power to do something and you choose not to use that power and you walk away to, to bless someone, to honor someone, for someone else to be glorified, someone else to be blessed, bless, and then you want to walk away, that's meekness. Not looking for attention. Looking for sometimes we do something, we want the whole world to come and say, Well done. No problem. Just do it quietly, walk away. Meekness. Meekness. Bible Moses has been known as the meekest man. Abraham is also known as that. Jesus has been also known that. So that is why I say I bring the context to another level. So what is meekness? What is meekness? Whatever that you do to glorify the name of God in any situation and not allowing yourself to be exalted, it's meekness. It's not me, Lord. It's you. And you walk away. Are you with me? I'm not even in my message yet. So meekness, long, you must say long, suffering. Suffering is in the 
long suffering. Why? Because we cannot suffer long. We have a problem. Konja mali chale ayo amman uro kupte nara dichro. Long suffering. This long suffering is not about the personal problems you go through, ah. Ella ina puri se ranga, puri se ranga na purter ke katter ka gana katter padathilo amandi katter ke. Inda drama la panna dinge. Panna kura adi panna matinge teriyo. Idi ke long suffering la. The long suffering has got the. It's a process. It's a process of developing Christ in your life. You can write that and put on Canva. Because a lot of Christians don't understand. Christians are making a mess in the marketplace. You go to a church, narrow mukar bato, okanda katter ka gana baar patti jebi kere wrong ama wrong wrong. Oni amati tanga. Oni soli gurukle. Oni amati tanga. What is long suffering? The process Jesus went through to become a son. He suffered within long suffering, like a mother giving birth. A two mani naro, but two mani naro la women have suffered giving birth. She suffers, she accepts the suffering, she stay and remain in the suffering for the deliverance of the son. All of us are long suffering, sons of God. We are long suffering. Why? To produce the Christ in us, nothing else. Everything related to Christ. Not to do with your human relationship. In the Vartan Arkla, uh, uh, ten, uh, below, tender mercy, kindness. We relate with your day-to-day -day life. No, it's got nothing to do with your day-to-day -day life. It has got to produce the Christ in you. It has got to produce the Christ in you. Amen. Are you with me? Long. Are you with? Can you agree with me? What is the long suffering? So you are in your family. Your family don't understand you. People put pressure on you. Or or thing, you all along I put that church problem. Chirke, and then a lot of problem now coming in. More problems are coming in because you are impregnated with Christ. Provocation will increase the moment you are impregnated with Christ, and that's the time you must learn the art of long suffering. You need to understand. I need this, Lord. I need this opportunity. Why? In the custodial time, Christ can be formed. No matter how people pressuring you, don't run away from pressure. Stand because that's what the scripture says: long suffering. It produces the Christ in you. We must learn to. So, ever there you all okay? That you love God. When people come and attack you, when people say lies about you, when people abandon you, when people do all that, face wrong. When a pretty pretty face wrong, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, that will not change my character. I will still meet that person who's mocking at me. I'll still treat them as my own. Suffering, right? <laughs> If you find out someone talking very bad about you, and then you need to host that person in your house and give them the best. Adu kora vena. Even to see that person, you will go. You already know this person has mocked about you, really laugh about you, and then to look at that person. and you need to deal with your nature to look at the person not based on what this person has done to you but look at the person based on who god is suffering valikyo valikyo are you with me you learning something this has got nothing to do with christian good behavior christians don't have good behavior seriously christians don't behave well they only put up a show in front at the back they are full of nonsense why am i saying this like that because if they are doing according to the word of god they would now singapore would be in the hands of christ there is no church in this nation including us we are all in the process we are all in the process even our church is not qualified we are all in the process we need to return back to the word of god we need to return back to who he is and not what we want or what we are we need to come into him right long suffering bearing with one another also related to bearing with one another demand what bearing with one another what do you need to bear that he produced the christ in him i will wait until my husband is produced or restructured or built according to christ i will wait for you i will i will patiently wait for the christ to be produced in you i'll wait for my wife for how to come to us that she will be pregnant with Christ and she will produce Christ bearing with one another it is not that parole church la christian circle la church 
ஒருத்தர் ஒருத்தரை நம்ம அனுசரித்து போனோம் ஒருத்தர் ஒருத்தர் இதெல்லாம் இருக்குது வெளியில் இருக்கும் போது தான் பட் வாட் இஸ் த ட்ரூத் பிஹைண்ட் இட் காட் வாட் நாட் டெல் யூ திஸ் கேன் ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் ஜஸ்ட் ஃபார் யூ டு அக்செப்ட் யோர் ஓன் பிரதர் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர் தே ஆர் த ஒன் கோன் கட் யோர் நெக் ஆஃப் ஸோ ப்ராக்டிக் சொல்கிறேன் ஜீசஸோட ஓன் பிரதர்ஸ் மெஸ்டிமா வி ஓல் ரீட் இன் த புக் ஆஃப் ஜான் all the disciples ran away from him that what do you mean by bearing one another you run around your family members you try to keep them no that's not the meaning god is not asking you to keep them your tolerance with them your tolerance with one another is to see christ being produced in one another if you if you believe me you must say amen belangada pa your mind i'm shifting your mind from being a good person to be a righteous person righteousness is the order of god good is from the world it's good it's okay be good but it's not god's level you understand so bearing with one another and what forgiving one another also what why you forgive one another for one reason only i know it's not even in our dictionary <laughs> it's not in the dictionary what is the purpose of forgiving is forgiveness a choice forgiveness is not a choice it's a command none of you can hold back grudges against anyone anyone offends you you got to within the next i tell you within 5 minutes you got to deal with your heart to forgive that person if not you will not have the peace of god in your life people can offend you you can't offend people people can hold offense you can't hold offense you are the temple of god you are holy see that if you can build your house in this order that will not be phew, you will see the holy city of god so why do you need to forgive i told you no one is perfect what do you mean by no one is perfect when when someone become perfect try and tell until they find christ until christ is developed not find christ until christ the seed the sperma the seed is produced in your spirit and then let the, you pregnated with the seed the nature attribute of god and let that seed affect your entire system and you start to see everything according to his perspective adwarga samadhanam kadayadu poratam na so forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another even as christ forgave you so you also must so that this is not how god forgive you you must forgive others there is a technical term behind it christ forgive christ forgive christ forgive for give he gives something he gives something in your forgiveness you are giving something you give the nature and attribute of your father to one another that's truly forgiving you don't just forgive people say i'm sorry you need to now practice and reveal the christ in you and that's how you bless your enemy that's how you bless your enemy you give them christ you want to punish your enemy not bless you want to punish your enemy give them the christ people talk bad about you you want to bless you want to punish them give them christ don't give yourself don't give yourself to them give the christ in you that is the greatest punishment of all time that's how you punish your enemy we all must punish our enemies amen we punish them with the love of god we punish them with christ in us we have no other rights very sadly i'm saying this this world is so brutal and you can't raise your hand and do what you want to do the only right that have been given to us is to give christ to one another amen it's a very good portion it's a very good portion joseph is giving me the signal so go back and read this is very nice portion read slowly not every word as you must work on the english context and you must go back to the intent of god god will not just say something for the sake of human feelings because god is not human god is spirit god's mind or thinking capacity is far greater than any one of us in the world there's no one no one not any one in the bible in the bible or in the world have come closer to the mind of god now idha unme what we have is the the grace of god that we have the word of god our the mercy tender mercy kindness and in his grace he gave us a glimpse of who he is 
through the 66 book. அதில் வாழ்கிறதா அதுக்குள்ளே நம்மளுக்கு எவ்வளோ பேர் புகழ் போட்டி பொறாமை மன்னிக்க முடியாத தன்மை பந்தா திமுறு எல்லாமே இருக்கு நமக்கு அறுபத்தி ஆறு புக்கு வச்சுக்கிட்டவன் திங் தட் ஈஸ் காட் வி ஆர் நாட் வி ஆர் நாட் இவன் க்ளூஸ் வாட் வி ஹேவ் இஸ் இஸ் அ கிளீம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹூ காட் இஸ் கிளீம்ஸ் இமேன் ஸோ லெட்ஸ் லுக் அட் ஜான் லெட்ஸ் கோ பேக் டு ஜான் Let's go back to John. John chapter 1. I'm going to read from 29. Recap. And then we move on. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him. Whenever I say Jesus, what do you see? Allah say it. word what is the, what is the word before word what was it voice before voice what was it intent same thing happened to you anything before coming out in a form of a word picture and when i'm speaking it it only become a word when you have the vocab or alphabet in your mind i'm saying only a sound but you have the capacity to add meaning make it a word in your mind from me what you are hearing is only a sound but what you have in your mind you have the alphabet you have the the vocab to give a meaning to what you are hearing the sound picture pannunga picture pannunga because i'm bringing you back how the old testament Uh, uh, uh many things are not properly interpreted we need to look into all that because a lot of uh, scriptures in the bible that we read we misunderstand because of a human understanding so before we have the word before the word before it became the word it was the voice a sound and what was the voice it was the intent of god so before what i'm saying to you right now you before it become a word you hearing my voice and before my voice was was formed the voice was my is my intent what i plan inside i just want to put this drawing in your mind so when you someone is talking to you when they are using words you are not you are not listening to what they say you must learn to read their mind you read the mind of that person sometimes words and mind will be different huh? we have that problem god don't have the problem god speaks his mind but the problem we have is we can't understand his word for we do not know his mind <laughs> because we have our own mind we see everything from our own mind okay so next day john saw jesus coming towards him and said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world so the lamb of god why they call him the lamb of god today still in the earth all religion practicing sacrifice of lamb so if you now go back into the ancient day in the beginning when mankind fell a sacrifice god say a sacrifice will come from that day onwards before jesus became the lamb of god to be sacrificed jesus is not the lamb it's a metaphor right in the old testament they will take a pure unblemished lamb they feed it well they keep it one side to be sacrificed in the temple for the sin of the family iniga ellathume seiranga so if any other religion anyone who still sacrificing lamb they are declaring the name of jesus the christ but sadly the lamb of god arrived and died on the cross for the sin of all mankind because they have not found him they still sacrificing lamb see now it makes sense right he says that next day john saw jesus coming towards him and said behold the lamb of god has arrived who see that's why he's announcing as arrived who takes away the sin of the world i want to elaborate more but i don't have the time I need to go into today's one This is he of whom I said after me comes a man who is preferred before me that means he existed before me for he was before me I did not know him 
but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. Powerful line, man. Powerful line. I, I think I did it last week, right? Yes. So you want me to move on, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him. Every word has got double meaning or, or triple meaning or whatever meaning. It's not one, just not one. You've got to see properly. Right? He remained upon him. I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Go back and listen to my last week teaching. Please, never miss a teaching. Say Amen. If you want to grow, if you want to see the hands of God in your life, you better listen to what I teach. Don't miss a teaching. I'm not teaching my, my own culture. I myself learning from what God is teaching me and I'm sharing that with you. So don't miss. 35. Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. John, John the Baptist, stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus, the word, as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard of him speak. I told you John is the cousin of Jesus. But when he, whenever he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, the one who... I, I, I can't, I'm not even fit to wash his feet or remove his sandal. He's talking about his own cousin. I don't know whether they interacted or whatever, but he was keep... He, because John is no longer seeing naturally, John is seeing spiritually. Right? And you know why I say John, John's name is grace? Meaning of John is grace. And what is the meaning of grace? To enable the sun in you. To enable the sun in you. To help you to become a son of God. Right? So you see, every time John sees, grace is announcing the word. Grace is announcing the word. You saw that? And that's what he's doing. Okay. So, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. They followed Jesus. They followed the word. Then Jesus turned and see, seeing them following, said to them, Word of God, very powerful every time the word of God. What do you seek? Whenever you read the word, you come to the word, right? The word of God has got a habit to ask you, what are you looking for? Picture pananga. The word of God will always ask you, what are you looking for in me? Because the word needs to justify that. And then they explain. They said to him, immediate response was, Rabbi. Which means, which is to say, when translated, teacher. So what do you seek? The word of God, uh, uh, Jesus asking, the word is asking, what do you seek? And they say, teach us. Please teach us. So when you look at the word, the word says, what do you want? So you're hum this is humble, being humble. Huh? This is how you humble yourself. And you look at the word and say, teach me. Show me. Show me what I need to see. See that part here? That's the conversation. That's the spiritual conversation. That's the mystery here. Then say, teach me, teacher. And he's immediately he said to them, what did he say? Come and... See, did I share this last week? The word come means what? Formed. Be formed. You are unformed. Unformed. The word come means be formed. I give you a form. F-O-R-M. Formed. Come and see. So when you come into the word, you are now being formed to see what you can't see in your natural sight. Okay? Can you teach like that to others? Now this is how you're going to teach. All of you are teachers. All of you will become rabbis. All of you will become scribe. The world has got no truth. The world has got no truth, no light. 
you are the only hope for this world. Trust me when I'm saying this. Okay? So, and then they come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him. Now, this is the environment of the world. They're now moving into the world. They came and saw and remained with him. They never departed since. Remain with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was, was, Andrew, Simon, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He heard what he was saying. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. Which is transferred? The Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. There's a reason for him to quote him, Simon, son of Jonah. And you shall be called Cephas. I don't know, but let me try to <laughs> paraphrase it. Simon, son of Jonah. Who is Jonah? Jonah is known for what? Ran away. Did not obey. Simon, the word Simon means hearer. Our gift is gifting is to hear. Simon, son of Jonah, he referring to Jonah. I only know Jonah for that reason. Maybe his family or the initial reply. It doesn't matter, but I think this is how I want to see so that you better understand. Simon, son of Jonah. Son means representing that movement. Rebel, walked away, ran away. But now you say your name is no longer Simon, son of Jonah. Your name is what? Kephas. Kephas. Not Cephas. Can also is English. <laughs> right? Kephas. Simon, son of Kephas. Why he changes his name? He heard the Messiah because there was a joy within him to look for the Christ. He's not a perfect guy. You know Simon Peter, right? The one who denied. That's the guy. But he has been always looking. I think there was a joy within him to look for the Messiah. So immediately he goes and tells him and he comes and Jesus addressing him. When he come because of his heart posture was right. And he says, you are no longer, you are Simon son of Jonah. From now you are not Simon son of Jonah. You are Simon son of, where am I? You shall be called, you see, Simon son of Jonah. You shall be called Kephas, which means a stone. Jonah rebel. Now he is calling him what? A stone. Stone meaning what? Revelation of the word. So he is Simon. By he hearing the voice, faith increases, right? How your faith will increase? Only through hearing. When you hear the word, faith, you will be able to see heavenly things and then you become a? You understand? Can you see that picture there? You all got, got it? So what is Simon? The, uh, called you to be? You shall be called. That means you will be recognized. The word you will be seen as. You will be known as. You shall be called Kephas, stone, my revelation. John the Baptist was revealing grace of God. Speaks about a season that will enable you and us to become sons of God. Now the next movement is Simon Peter. Kephas will become what? Simon hearer by hearing the word of God. Spiritual eyes open, see mysteries, and you unpack mysteries. Revelation. That's the picture. Okay? So, you're, so you are Simon, son of Jonah. Abrita, hey, you're Simon, son of Jonah. From today, you shall be called Kephas. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Means what? What do you mean by follow me? 
The English word for follow is what? Huh? See and walk. The best word is imitate me. Today a lot of people say, I follow Jesus. No, you are not following Jesus. You are following a religion. The word follow demands you to to be deformed and reformed. Follow me. The demand of following me, what happens to you? What happens to the sons of God in this house? The demand for you to follow me demands you to be reformed in Christ. Not, not just say, I'm following Pastor Michael Logan. You say, oh, we're going to go to the church. I'm going to Pentecostal. I'm going Methodist. I'm Anglican. I'm going All these are following a movement. None of you are supposed to follow a denomination. It's on the record. Denomination is man-made. Why are you so fool to follow denomination? The mandate is to follow the word of God. The mandate is to follow Christ. The mandate by following Christ is for us to become sons of God. That's biblical. And today a lot of people, who are you? I'm a Christian. Who told you you're a Christian? Who gave you the name? Who told you you're a Christian? Heaven did not call you Christians. Heaven declared my son. Because he gave us his image. Not heaven. The order, heaven is an order declaring that we are sons of God. God called us sons of God. We are not Christians. Sorry. You can even erase that. Earlier days I say no. Remove that from your mind. We need to go back to the ancient pathway. We are sons of God. We are the people of the way. Amen? Amen. So he said, follow me. The word me is what we need to become. That's why I say deform is follow. The word me is be formed, reformed. Follow me. And he said, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida. What is the meaning? Bethabara. The city and of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. See, they still don't have a heavenly perspective. Their eyes are not open. That's a situation. Coral, eh? Adam got a present state. They recognize him. This. We, Kaili Patong, Avudan the Messiah, the son of Joseph Dana. They still don't have a clue. They, they don't have personal revelation that he is God. Because they're still saying he's son of Joseph. Amen? Son of Joseph cannot be a son of God. You understand? Because for them, they always relate him with the Joseph. Biological. Uh, biological. That will cause a lot of problem. And Nathanael said to him, Can, and he said, is uh, Jesus of Nazareth and son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out? of Nazareth. Is it possible? Because Nazareth had a reputation. You got to go and read about it. Philip said to him, come, now Philip said, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards, he said, anything good can come out from Nazareth. This is Nathanael. So here Philip go to Nathanael and say, hey, come and see. I found him. And then, and then Jesus, at one, one quote that Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That was his statement. And then now Jesus saw Nathaniel coming, to, coming towards him. And he said, behold, an Israelite. You know why Jesus is talking like that? He already heard what he spoke. Can anything good come out of that place? And then he said, uh, coming to us, behold, an Israelite. Indeed, in whom is no deceit. This part, when he called an Israelite, Nathaniel is an Israelite. The word Israel means, before Israel it was what? Jacob. Jacob was? 
a liar, a man of deceit. So he say, first time Jesus is saying, I saw indeed an Israelite, but no deceit in you. Wow. And then you see how he admonished him. Behold Israelite, an Israelite, indeed in whom no deceit. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? How do you know that? It's, it's astonished. It's, wow. Have you, have you ever met such people in your life? Prophet gives, they come and see, they can tell you about something that only you know. These are men who carry the spirit of God. Huh? They also got a lot of clowns out there also can do it using evil spirit. You must recognize who is of God, who is not of God. But you see how Jesus is operating in that, in that gift or in that grace. Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel said to him, how, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, fig tree is what? Speaks about a religion, a system. Before Philip come and calls you, I saw you under the tree. The Talmud answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. On confidence side, only God can see all this what? Come on, follow me for a while. Huh? I'm going to help you something. Help you with something. Must be a man of God. Correct? Today we have a lot of clowns and liars are coming into the church and also doing the same thing. Most of the people are falling for them because they say, in the mari nyano, in the mari prophecy, only man, God, man of God. So on the note, he's saying, must be the man of God. You are a God. You are God, Sultan. But this is how Jesus encounters him. Where am I here, right? Right. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. What did he put on label? What did he label put it on? Because he prophesied. Do you know the modern day church? Uh, false prophet, imposters, they come and give one prophecy. The whole church will now give their life to that person. And then he starts to take your power. What the devil will do? He, all you have to do is lie and do a trick and you will give your power to that person. The devil don't have power. We have the power. So in order to take the power, the devil needs to create lies that you will believe. The moment you believe lies, your power will be transferred to the enemy and you become the slave. That's how religion has been formed. That's how many other movement platforms are formed. Think about it. So Jesus did Pandar, you are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, you see, one, two, three, Jesus said, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? <laughs> he was not saying, well done, yes, I am the son of God. <laughs> Nana, that's me, it's me, come, let's take a selfie, let's take a photo, I'm the one, I'm the one, I can do this, I can heal this. Jesus immediately, just because I, I saw you under the fig tree, because I tell you what only you know, and you claim that I'm the... Because I say to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Now you believe. And then he says, you will see, then this. So what's happening in the picture now? What is the picture here? You saw this little... Uh, miracle, so-called miracle. I saw you under the fig tree. I told you this, this small uh, uh, miracle that happened to you. It's a mystery to you. How can someone know? Based on that, you tell me I'm God? Not yet. Because you will never know that I am He. Until you see, greater, greater, greater. Great means what? High means what? Always speaks about spiritual things. So he said, you, if you see me and judge me and endorse me based on what you saw with your natural eyes, what you hear, then it's not right. Not yet. The time has not come. And then he says this word to him, you will see greater things than this. Because all the miracles Jesus did in the earth is to unpack the greater things 
not for you to enjoy the miracle. Every miracle that happens in your life is to find the unseen God, to know a higher thing and greater things. So you cannot succumb to the today present miracles and all that signs and wonders happening in the natural dimension. All that happening in the natural is to unpack the mysteries of heaven or in the spiritual dimension. I want to find some kind of analogies to tell you. We are sitting here. We are at the 8th floor, right? That's ninth floor. Do you know what is exactly above your head in the unit? Anyone can see? Will you believe me? I can see. Right above my head, there's a sofa. I see there's a sofa above me. None of you can believe because you can't see. But I say, there's a sofa, there's a coffee table here, there, there's a big shelf in this wall, there's a lot of curtains are arranged in this wall. Can you see what I see? Can you believe what I believe, what I see? You can't, right? Unless you also see. You understand? That is the whole challenge Jesus has. He's, he sees how the Father has made in His perfect will, but because we have natural eyes, you can't see through this wall. You need now the power to see through the wall. The power that gives you to see through the wall is the Word of God. And having the ability to see through this wall, the ceiling, is called faith. It's called faith. Then when you go, unless you go up there to the room and you see, Pastor Sonu, write down. How is it possible for him to see from here? So what is the next thing will happen to you? What will happen to you? You will come to me and say what? Pastor, I also want to see like you. <laughs> Am I right? What did, Jesus, what did Peter say to Jesus when he walked on the water? I also want to walk on the water. He said, why not? Sure, can, try. Bah. According to your faith. You saw that? So you can't see. Heaven is like something above this unit, but you can't see. You need to have a particular skill to see through. Maybe I have a scanner to see through. Because these are all impossible, not possible. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Heaven is that dimension which actually we need that to live this in this earth. But because we can't see what's on the other side, we are not having the life of God. We are still suffering. And that's why this, this is the work. So here Jesus is telling, now you base everything based on what you see in the natural, here in the natural, but hey, what's his name? Nathaniel, oh no. Nathaniel, hey, Nathaniel, but the days are coming. You're going to see higher things. You're going to see like me. You will see what I see. You will not see what you want to see. You will see what I will show you. Are you all with me? Okay? So, and then what? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, the word most assuredly means what? Most assured. Every time when Jesus says, most assuredly. Why am I doing this? Because when you read your Bible, things will make sense. You learn a Bible, but you get a stop. That's why a lot of people open and read fewer and then you sleep because nothing makes sense to your carnal mind. I'm telling you a video, not to you guys. Because really telling you the things of God will never make sense to the carnal mind. Our carnal mind cannot see who God is. Even if God just come and appear before you and say, hey, Joseph, it's me. I'm God. Stop playing, la, pastor. Stop playing, la. I know you're a man of God, but don't tell me you're God. And then all the whole drama will start. Not about me, but it happened to Jesus. <laughs> because he was, he was really God manifested. And they, they could not recognize. You see what this guy says? That he only believed Jesus because of the, the prophetic or the word of knowledge. Word of knowledge alone. If Jesus did not say that, he would have come and provoked Jesus to test if you are the Messiah. Test Manirba. Amal, yeah? Test Manirba. 
ana avaru vande because of the word of knowledge he immediately got taken soul neenga thala andavar nichayama indha maari arbhuda vera yavume seiya mudiyadhu neenga apdi da ella kootta kootama odikirukanga ivar varaaru avar varaaru ivar vanda nalla theerka darshanam very sharp prophet very sharp prophet why you running after prophets any many suffering and die because the enemy know what you need what you are crying for so you want a prophet you want to know what will happen to you tomorrow you want to know kudumba eppadi irukkonu or josia karana elivi utta ana pastor prophet mari vandu nikkira that says the lord ngara but go and see their life there's no christ they are they themselves live in crisis without christ stop going after such men If you were to see a man of God sent by God God will testify God will testify that is mine Amen don't rush into it so most assuredly whenever Jesus said most assuredly so listen to me carefully yeah this is the meaning ah huh? why Jesus said every time Jesus will use most assuredly I tell you the word most is also related to what high greater spiritual thing why Jesus only can say most assuredly because he was from the other side so he said na enna thavara vera yaar inda testify panna mudiyadhu most assuredly is guarantee because he came from there that's the meaning only he can say that word most assuredly enna because i am from there i am a guy who running carpentry business carpentry patti enakku nalla theriyum inge irukra yaarukku carpentry patti onnum theriyadhu even danny who works with me the guys who works with me you won't know what i know i'm qualified so and then you come and tell i have this wood problem i think this problem that problem and then i'll go to you and say excuse me most assuredly i tell you qualified ah huh? what you saw is wrong let me tell you what's the actual problem because i'm the one qualified to represent the wood problem that you have because i'm a carpenter you understand so when jesus said most assuredly when he says i am the one now testifying from the other side and the only one can witness so you understand that part ah huh? okay so um where am i most assuredly i say to you i you see i say to you here after you shall see heaven open it's not a christian word heaven nare cloud la mele nare angels la apdi padala tamil padala yamathidanunga ambiradinga erase pannunga okay most surely i say to you from heaven ah he is testifying ah someone from that side most surely i say to you here after here after here after here after means what what here after from now on why now you have encountered the word here after ingirudin enna paapana aavikuriya kaaringala paapan solrare yen because you have now encountered the word here after because now you have encountered the word from now on you will see mysteries of christ you will now recognize the mind of christ you will see spiritual makeup and set up you have all this i just said is heaven are you all with me good ah huh? so he said that and he said to him most assuredly i say to you here after circle pannunga what here after you shall see heaven open what is heaven the design of god for mankind in the earth So from now you will see the f- finish work the design the blueprint finally you will know what you must do in the earth your purpose is heaven your purpose is not to die and go to heaven your purpose is to plunder heaven plunder it take it bring it here that's the glory of a son of god what is the glory of a son of god plundering heaven establishing earth Amen. So most of all I say to you here after you shall see heaven open to you. Why open? Because you have the word heaven have to open itself to you. The only way heaven can open itself to you when you have the word inside you. Not here. Here inside you your operation. Open uh, heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon who? So what will happen when heaven open heaven turns heaven is a finished work designed for earth so you will see what 
angels of God ascending and descending. What's happening now? Heaven is now being transferred into the earth. Through what? Through who? What is the medium? Son of man, not church. The corporate body of Christ. It's through you, you, heaven will unpack mysteries. It's through us, the sons of God. So Jesus is the prototype model. Next one. Done? Wow. I did it. Now, we're going for a wedding now. Are you all ready to go into the wedding? I'll just touch a bit. So won't, you know... So chapter 1, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, we finished it. There's so much inside, right? Go back and take the whole chapter 1 and hear again. Take the whole chapter 1 and hear again. Until you memorize the arrangement. Until you memorize the arrangement and then you, until you see the spiritual setting of this natural book. What is the spiritual setting? That's why I'm trying to change everything for you. And then you must read again the whole chapter 1 Hear my teaching again at least three times. And then the whole book of the chapter one will transfer into you. You will start to see gleams of heavenly makeup and design. I'm using this book to open your spiritual eyes. So it's very serious. What's happening right now is a surgery. I'm now working with your sight. Very soon, you guys will start to see angels ascending and descending from heaven. I'm declaring it. All the faithful people of this house will start to see angels ascending and descending from that vantage point, heaven into the earth. You will now have designed and purpose for your life to establish the work of your heavenly father. Are you with me? Do you love your father? If you love him, then devote yourself to the word of God. That's the way you show God that you love God. You cannot just faithfully go to church, pay your tithes and offering and attending a church, being a member for the next hundred years and you die. That's not a faithful follower. Do you understand? When you love the word of God, migrate into the word of God, you allow yourself to be established in the word of God, shows that you love, the, love God. That's the way you love God. No other way to love God. And anyone, only a fool will never love God. <laughs> Who is a fool? Unable to think. Who is a fool? Unable to think. Unable to arrange the thinking is a fool. Unable to get their mind sorted out is a fool. Unable to see and describe what they're seeing is a fool. Because they don't have the, the intel to describe what they see. They're fools. It's not a bad word, huh? it's a good word, it's a condition, describing a condition of a person. If, you see, without these glasses, right, I can't read. I can't read. So I need to use the glasses to read. So when I don't use the glasses, I can't make up what is written there and I'll start to what? Blabber. That's foolishness. Unable to define what is right before you. That's foolishness. You see something and you judge something and you say something and your problem starts. That's out of foolishness. That is why I say don't be quick to judge, say, speak, shout or whatever. Slow down, back up, wait for a big picture. Wait patiently. Don't rush into anything. Amen? Okay. So let the book be in you and reform you. Come and see. Come and see. Become, be formed and see. And then is what? Follow me. Follow means deform me reformed in Christ. Okay. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Natural mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. That's very good. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. See, now, natural. They don't have spiritual side. I don't know how to say this. I don't know whether you all understand this or not. You go and see a doctor. You're a human. 
உனக்கு வயிற்றுல ஒரே வழி உன் வீட்டில் இருக்கவங்க என்ன சொல்லுவாங்கண்ணா என்ன சாப்பிட்ட நேற்று ராத்திரி என்ன சாப்பிட்ட என்ன குடித்த வயிறு சரியில்லை வயிறில் க தே ஒரு ஸ்டார்ட் டு கிவ் ஆல் தி ஸ்பெக்குலேஷன் பேஸ் ஆன் அசம்ஷன் ரைட் பட் வென் யூ கோ டு அ டாக்டர் the way the way the moment you tell your description of your pain he sees from a different knowledge setting and then he ask you to lie down he he try to ask you to describe the type of pain and then immediately he says okay this is a situation and that you write the you write a prescription and you take a medication and you go or sometimes he say you need to go for a surgery there's a lump inside you how do you know that because he sees further because he has been trained to see further what your eyes cannot see some can see we having that problem now many of the things you see is not according to the truth nam ellarum agree pannu enakku and problem irukke that's why i say go slow so here jesus is mother she going to a wedding banda because they are very well known family yeah carpentry they do carpentry they are business people Jesus is not a yell, not a picture. I don't know how Indian churches talk about Jesus. I don't know how Jesus is a yell. The Tamil church taught me that Jesus is a yell. That's why I have to take a picture of the church. I hate churches that beg people for money. If I see them, I'll whip them. I hate when Christians come and beg for money because it's a disgrace to my father. I hate them. I use the word, I hate them. I know I'm not supposed to hate them. I hate that spirit. I hate that nature because it defiles the name of my father. You understand, right? You don't do that. So that's it. So they can't see what is the original makeup. So you see, so here, here, here Mary come and say, coming for a wedding, Jesus' family is well-to-do family. So wedding, come and say, wine, come and say, wishy, come and say, Mary, come and say, Mary must be somebody who, why must someone must go and tell Mary, a wine, come and say, wedding, come and say, If Mary is a young girl, she will tell her, Hey, Mary, Mary, come here. She will come here and 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 come here. That's what Mary will say. So why did they come to Mary and tell, I have a problem. Why? They know Mary and their family is a reputable family. They could do something about it. Because Jesus was not an ordinary man. Jesus was a well-known businessman. He was into carpentry business. So you remember every time we go, we go with his gang, his disciples, his gang number 12. He comes and sit. Our number is one day. Right? This is our number is one day. So one day we come to the table. Again, the mother is coming. The mother is telling the son. There is a problem. There is a problem. We are talking about Tamil. So we are talking about the problem. Wine is going to die. அதோட இந்த டயலாக் பாருங்க என்ன நடக்குது பிகாஸ் ஷி இஸ் சீயிங் எவ்ரி திங் இன் த நேச்சுரல் ஷி ஹஸ் அ பவர் ஷி நோ ஹர் சான் ஷி ஐ டோன் நோ வாட் ஷி நோ அபவுட் ஜீசஸ் சீரியஸ்லி திஸ் இஸ் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் மிரிக்கல் இன் த பைபிள் ரைட் ஆஃப்டர் இஸ் பேப்டிசம் அதுக்கு முன்ன யாரும் மிரிக்கல் பற்றி ஒன்றும் ஓல்ட் டெஸ்டமெண்ட்ல தான் பார்த்துருக்கோம் நியூ டெஸ்டமெண்ட்ல பார்க்கல ஸோ அங்கேயே தான் இந்த சீன் ரென் அவுட் ஆஃப் வாய் மது ஆஃப் ஜீசஸ் சேட் டு ஹீம் தே ஹவ் நோ வாய் ஜீசஸ் சேட் டு உமன் இஸ் சி த வேர்ட் உமன் The word woman there? Number one, our mother will disturb us. Hey, woman, all that. But when Jesus say, woman, I went and read the context of it, uh, the Hebrew translation, uh, it is wife. It is wife or a few things but not mother. So he's not calling his mother wife. He's, he's referring to the church. The church is the female. The church. the bride and the groom christ so from the spiritual position is asking the church is now addressing the church today many churches are going through this situation so we're going to look at we're going to look at that so he say and when they run out and they have no wine they have no wine they have no wine they who are they 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 the church they the church have no wine no wine what do you mean by that the church now as god no wine no revelation no revelation and then what 
said Jesus said to her woman the church the church they the church what do you what does your concern have to do with me the word is asking what is your concern church with me what do you want remember what he asked the disciples just now what do you want what do you seek again you see the word is asking what do you have got to do the problem ke enak ena sambandham kekkarar why are you coming to me woman the church velangale paarenga ungal velangida adha than important does not concern with me and then he say what my hour has not come because now jesus is in the process of finishing some things remember fulfilling walking in obedience to die on the cross finishing and many more things and for him to be revealed that he is the son of god so so my hour has not come because this has got to do with the wine wine is revealing Re- revelation bible enna artham revelation enna artham what must be revealed what is the revelation the church is looking for what is the revelation that you and i are the sons of god what is the revelation so have father came in the form of human and revealed sonship to us so that we become sons revelation has always got to do with what your sonship in christ the purpose of jesus is not to just die on the cross and save us from sin come on what's the point of you? jesus just removing your sin what's the point then you can go to heaven that's christian teaching no more than that more than that your dying your sins being forgiven has nothing to do with for you to go to heaven first thing ah huh? you your sins must be forgiven paavam manipullana paralogathukku poga mudiyadhu moochu thadaya mudiyadhu nu solli kudutanga enakku christian church la na nambarga paavam manipullana you cannot go to heaven பாவ மன்னிப்பு எப்படி கிடைக்கணும் இயேசு சொந்த ரச்சகரை ஏற்றுக்கணும் அப்படி திருப்பி அரைச்சா என்று சொன்னா நாக்கை வெளியே எடுத்து உள்ளுக்கு நான் நிச்சயமாக ஒரு ஆணி வச்சுடுவேன் அதுக்கப்புறம் அன்னிய பாஷையிலே பேசுவேன் இஸ் ராங் ராங் டீச்சிங் ஏர டீச்சிங் ஃபால்ஸ் டீச்சிங் காண் யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஸோ பாவ மன்னிக்க பண்ணோம்னா பாவம் மன்னிக்க பண்ணோம்னு அர்த்தம் why sin must be forgiven this sin the contact is hamartia miss the mark enna pa manike pano you lost the identity that you are a son of god other sin so jesus came into the earth to die for the sin of mankind mankind violated and lost sonship jesus came and walked in obedience redeemed the sonship pa manipana da and he gave us back the right to become sons of god see that so keep that somewhere in your somewhere in your mind <laughs> so why, that's revelation that's revelation so revelation na is not some man come and tell you that says the lord onakku theriyada oru vishayathe theri vekkiradhu per revelation la the intent of the revelation biblically is to reveal your sonship through jesus the christ jesus came to reveal not he is the son of god he is the template of a son of god to you make sense even if it doesn't make sense it's okay for me okay take your time they have no wine jesus said to woman what does that my time has not come his mother said to the immediately the mother said to the servants whatever he say you do it she had faith <laughs> and then jesus saw time varla na eppadi idu seyrudhu not time what but then this is how the powerful part bible er kro over miracle most of the miracle the time was not there so for god to reveal something he did miracles and used parables most of the miracles were done because the time was not ready so through the miracles he decoded mysteries are you ready okay this is the best part so she his mother you see when they say the woman here the capital letter w so he's not referring to his mother he's referring to the church the woman in the garden of eden who fell representing the church okay my always not come his mother said now you see mother small m going back to the natural mother 
The mother said to the servant, whatever he says, just do it. I know he's not, a, not like you guys. He's, a, he, he, he's from heaven. Only she, Mary only knows that one. Angel came in appeared and tell. He's a virgin, but Mary is a virgin. So Mary somehow feels there's, there's some power in him. And said, just go to him, servants. Right? Whatever he said to you, whatever he said to you, just do it. Don't ask questions. You will never understand him. Just do what he asks you to do. Now, there were, there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Look at the screen again. I know, because we like to read. Pastor, I have a lot of dhyanam. 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 Right? Now, with me, are you with me? Now, there were set, there were set there six water pot of stone. Kalimandla Senja water pot. According to the manner of purification of the Jews. The purification of the Jews in Anartha. Tema. I want you to go and ask many Christians. Just underline that. As Padiching Lai John Lai, then Artho, according to the purification of the Jews. Do you know it's a very simple word? What is the Jewish custom? Purification na? Vitik Vanda Vasala Kala Galuno. Adulade. Where on Allah? This pot of water, Ella Vigna Vachirpanga, according to Jewish custom, and the pot Edik is one of Tani Narche. So Vitik Varang and Asiruna. You understand? That's why I'm saying it. But I'm saying it in English. According to the purification of the Jews. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. But I'm saying it. 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 This is not a fact. I am saying that. Proof is not a fact. If you are going to pay for your poetry, you will be able to pay for your poetry. I am saying that. Where is your God? Your God is supposed to protect you. Your God is supposed to protect you. So, there is no fact. There is no logic. I am saying that. 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 Come on, guys, please. Come on, guys, please. I'm not making a mockery. Huh? I'm asking where's the logic. I'm not making a mockery. I'm asking where's the logic. I'm asking where's the logic. I'm asking where's the logic. Mumpulnya pelinga, beli la, rata la, pakai kari, sah, bela muncang, thale la, mudi la, ani, apa yang? Suri udang, orang bela beri ani, payi bandar kah diklama. Ani apa tak payi berada, irum apa tak payi berada. Mudah payi na, nanti lima. So that, eh, umur lagi teriade, yang noda generation full ada tak? Seri, anggeri na, anggeri bandi Kristus tu keluar, na Kristus tu lima orang ceri kahangge. Different, different, nanu apa yang cerita ngelala? Purpono, apri pono, Yesus nama, Yesus nama, Yesus nama, itu ratah jayam, Yesus nama jayam, itu ratah payi warada, Yesus nama jayam, Yesus ratah jayam, soliti anda payi warada. Payi, anda nala nala arah guru terbuang. A lot of things we don't understand, and we were forced to believe with no substance in it. If you are intelligent, kau warda na yarjono muttal so naga, kau warma warada, orang yarjono muttal so naga kau warma warada, warna na. Anak ni mutal tanpa nak kari nari senji kiri ya, orang mutal kupu ramana putih sel nak kupu orang ya. Jossi barang ya, you get angry when someone say you you are not bright enough, you are not smart. Ni orang belang kelir, orang kadik kita baku kelir, orang tu anda mula kelir, so nak kau orang dengan mak ke? Anak ni sehirah kari terdetu pati na, nariya illogical ana things ana mana practice panik kau senji kiri kau, muda tanpa nak kari engar, puna kurka betam moonwati eci tu punma. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm entering here. Where are you? I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. 
அப்போ என்ன செய்வோம் சொல்லி நான் எப்போ குறுக்க போனால் பூனை போனால் பூனையை பிடிச்சிருவேன் இப்படி திரும்பிட்டு பூனை இப்படி வச்சு இந்த பக்கம் போவேன் ஏன்னா நான் போன காரியம் எனக்கு எனக்கு அதான் சொல்லி கொடுத்தாங்க பூனை நம்மளை பார்த்து என்னம்மா சொல்லும் ஐயோ இவ வந்து நான் குறுக்க நான் போற காரியம் நடக்காதுன்னு சொல்லி பூனை நம்மள பக்கம் நமக்கு பூனை குறுக்க போனா பூனை காரியம் நடக்காது ஆக்சுவலி பூனைக்கு தான் பாவம் பூனைக்கு குறுக்க போ பூனை வரக்குள்ள நம்ம குறுக்க போனால் அதுக்கு காரியம் தான் நடக்காது ஐ வில் சீ லைக் தேட் பிகாஸ் இஃப் யூ கேன் பூனையை நீ அப்படி வைக்கக்குள்ள பூனையை நம்மளை அப்படி வைக்கலாம் யூ கேன் ஜஸ்ட் யூஸ் அ கேட் ஃபார் தேட் ஆல் காட்ஸ் கிரியேஷன் வே இஸ் த லாஜிக் இன் திஸ் வே இஸ் த லாஜிக் நான் நிறைய இருக்கிறேன் சொல்லிகிட்டே போவேன் நிறைய இருக்கு அ லாட் ஆஃப் திங்ஸ் என்னோட என்னோட மத இன்லோ பாட்டி பாட்டி மத இன்லோ பாட்டி எங்கள் my stepfather side many years ago she had both kidney dialysis but god never give me access to pray because they uh, they were doing mnaikarata bomo barang sudukarla pe enumo eduthu vandanga ella vechi enna enumo seiranga the lord say don't go until the last kadasi doctor soltan uyir po podine and then on that day i was praying and then the lord say go don't give my people to the tamula narigalukku onaigalukku oppu kuduthrada பைபிளில் நிறைய நாயும் கோட் பண்ணாக்க டிமானிக் ஸ்பிரிட்ஸ் அர்த்தம் ரைட் சிம்பாலிக்லியா நிறைய ஓனாயும் டிமன்ல சிம்பாலிக்லி தே ஹவ் சச் நேச்சர் சம்திங் இட் டிஃபைன்ஸ் ஆர் எக்ஸ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ஸ் ஸ்பிரிட் ஆஃப் டாக்னஸ் ஸோ நரிகளுக்கு ஓனாக போகுது நான் நேரம் ஹாஸ்பிட்டலுக்கு போகிறேன் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் எல்லாம் நிற்கிறாங்க தே ஆர் ஆல் நாட் கிறிஸ்டின் தே ஆல் ஹிந்துஸ் எல்லாம் நிற்கிறாங்க கஸ்கேட்காரன் நிற்கிறான் சுக்காயிட்டான் கஸ்கேட்காரன் வா இன்றைக்கி இருக்கலாம் நம்மளுக்கு கஸ்கேட்காரன் நிற்கிறான் எல்லாம் அவங்க படுக்கக்கிட்ட போகிறேன் கிட்னி ஃபெயிலியரான என்ன அவன் தெரியுமா உடம்பு பலூன் மாதிரி வீங்கிடும் பிகாஸ் யூ கான் யூரின் வாட்டர் தண்ணி ஏறிடும் கையில் அப்படி இருக்கும் ரியலி ஷி லுக் லைக் அ ப்ளூட்டட் பலூன் ஒரு க்ளோப்பில் தண்ணி ஊற்றி பாருங்கள் எப்படி இருக்கணும் அந்த மாதிரி இருந்தாங்க அண்ட் ஷி வாஸ் டாயிங் அண்ட் தி கான் டூ டயலிசிஸ் பிகாஸ் போஃப் கிட்னி வீக் ஹார்ட் வாஸ் வீக் அண்ட் ஸோ நான் இங்கேருந்து போனேன் எல்லோரையும் பார்த்தேன் தெரிஞ்சவங்க தான் எல்லாம் தே நோ ஐம் ஐம் அ ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் லீடர் ஐம் நாட் அ பாஸ்டர் இயர் தே அப்போ நான் கேட்ட நீங்கள் எல்லாம் சேர்ந்துலாம் செஞ்சிட்டீங்களான்னு கேட்டேன் அவங்க மேலே இங்கே வரைக்கும் கயிறு இங்கே கயிறு இங்கே தொண்ணூறு அங்கே மலாய்க்கார பாராங் இங்கே இங்கே ஒரு பாராங் இங்கே ஒரு பாராங் எல்லாம் எல்லோரும் செஞ்சிட்டாங்க எல்லாம் போமோ எல்லாம் வந்துட்டானுங்க மற்ற சர்ச்சில் இருக்க பாஸ்டர்ஸ் கூட எல்லாம் வந்துட்டாங்க எல்லாம் செஞ்சிட்டாங்க நான் கேட்டேன் எல்லோரும் முடிச்சிட்டீங்களா அவங்க வேலையை இப்போ நீங்கள் எல்லாம் முடிச்சிட்டீங்கன்னா ஐ கோன் ப்ரீ ஃபார் ஹர் ஸோ யோர் டோன் மைனா ஓகேன்னு கேட்டேன் இல்லை நீ என்ன என்ன மாதிரி செஞ்சிக்க கஸ்கிரிக்காரன் வந்துட்டான் உயிர் போகுது ரைட் இன்னும் வாட் ஐ டீட் I took scissors, கையில் இருக்க கயிறு எல்லாத்தையும் வெட்டினேன் அங்கால் தாய்த்து பாரம் எல்லாம் கொண்டு போய் குப்பை தும்பை திறந்து போட்டேன் போட்டுட்டு என் கூட ரெண்டு பேர் தான் மை ஒய்ஃப் அண்ட் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் ஸோ எல்லாம் போட்டுட்டு நேராக கிட்ட பண்ணேன் காட் கேவ் மீ ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் வேர்ட் சே ப்ரே இன் அ இயர் ஷி நீட் டு ஹியர் த வேர்ட் ஸோ நேராக காதுகிட்ட போய் நின்று ஐ சே திஸ் வேர்ட் நான் ப்ரே பண்ண சொன்னேன் ஐ ப்ரேட் ஃபார் ஹர் ஐ சேட் ஆண்டு சொன்னார் இன்னொரு ரெண்டு நாளில் நீங்கள் வீட்டுக்கு போகிறீங்க நானே உங்களை டிஸ்சார்ஜ் பண்ணி கூட்டிகிட்டு போவேன் ஐ திங்க் பால் நோ திஸ் சொன்னேன் ஸோ காதிலே ப்ரே பண்ண பிகாஸ் ஷி நீட் டு ஹியர் த வேர்ட் வேர்ட் வால் பிரிங் ஹீலிங் பாருங்கள் நான் அப்பயே என்ன வேலை பண்ணேன்னு ஸோ விட்டுட்டு ஏஞ்சனே என் ஃப்ரெண்ட் கட்டேன் ஏய் சத்தமாக ப்ரே பண்ணு நிறைய இண்டிவெல்லாம் இருக்காங்களே ப்ரே பண்ணிதான் அவங்களாம் வாழ்க்கையில் மாதிரி இருக்கல்ல நான் சொன்னேன் டே சுகம் வந்து இவங்களுக்கு தான் இவங்களுக்கு இல்லை இவங்க சுகமாக ஆனால் அவங்கெல்லாம் பார்ப்பாங்க ஆண்டவர் யாருன்னு தெரியும் நான் ஐ கேனோ பிலீவ் ஹவ் ஐ ஸ்போக் ஆ ஐ வாஸ் அன் மை செல்ஃப் அண்ட் தென் ஐ வாக் அவே தேட் நாய் ஒன் ஆஃப் அ கிட்னி ஸ்டார்ட் டு ஒர்க் அண்ட் ஆல் த வாட்டர் கேமோ த நெக்ஸ்ட் மார்னிங் ஷி வென் ஃபார் டயாலிசிஸ் அண்ட் ஷி வாஸ் கிளியர் செகண்ட் டே ஷி வாஸ் ஆன் த பேட் அண்ட் ஷி வாஸ் டிஸ்சார்ஜ் அண்ட் ஷி சே ஐ கேனோ லீவ் அண்டில் ஐ கம் நான் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல் போகிறேன் மருந்த படிக்கையில் இருந்தவங்க நாக்கல் அப்படி உட்காந்துட்டு முடியெல்லாம் கட்டி பவுடர்லாம் போட்டு ஃப்ரெஷ்ஷாக உட்காந்து வெஸ்டர்ன் ஃபுட் சாப்பிட்டுக்கிட்டு இருக்காங்க ஐ ரிமூவ் எவ்ரி திங் அண்ட் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் த்ரூ இட் ஐ சி இ சோ த பவர் ஆஃப் த வேர்ட் ஆஃப் காட் ஐ நீட் டு பி வெரி ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் பிகாஸ் மெனி திங்ஸ் தட் வி டூ வி ஆர் இன் டெஸ்பரட் வி வாண்ட் ஹெல்ப் வி வாண்ட் ஃப்ரீடம் காற்று சேட்டை இந்த சேட்டை இத
I want you to have the nature of testing everything, checking everything. Don't just accept what people say. Don't just accept lies. You need to come back to the truth. You need to come back to the word. So this is what happening in between here. What his mother said to them, whatever he said, just do it. Now they said six pots of water, we to vassal ochirikanga, tanni, kalu kalurade, purification of juice, containing 20 or 30 gallons a piece. Or patra dila, 20 to 30 gallons a you can even unpack the 20 and 30. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. That means what happened? We took tanni in the chella, use pandanga, mudijirchi. So it's empty and ikidanga, tanni. So the vessel, water pot, clay pot, made of clay, the vessel speaks about human. Right? Now it means again, human, without water. So for you to, for Jesus to reveal a revelation, first what must be done? The vessel must be filled with what? Water. Water is what? Word of God. Jesus can never do anything if you are not filled with water, with the word of God. Without the logos, there's no rema. Today a lot of people, rema, 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 rema. Foolish people. Logos, the whole account of word, illana, rema, rema comes out of logos. So word, the word, right? So he says what? Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Brim na na Going to your mind. Spirit, soul and body. Brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from. I think the master of the uh, feast, I think talking about the system, those who govern the system. How is it possible? Question, how is it possible? And tasted the water was made wine and did not know where it came from. But the servant who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bride. Paranga, Arthide. And they took it when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from. You see, now they are now we're talking about revelation. How can this water now become? It was water. How is it becoming wine now? How is it possible? Right? That's what we're wondering now. Drawn the water and the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to, said to him, every man, he called the bridegroom. I'm thinking the father of the house, the man in charge. You see, every man at the beginning sets out good wine. You know what they do in every marriage wedding? And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. So what is the culture now? The, anyone who's doing a wedding, they will bring the best wine and serve those who are coming in front. Earlier, But how is it in this, your house, even Kadesila could I... Kadesila, you serve the best wine. You kept the best for the last? He's asking. You kept the best for the last? You understand here? And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out to good wine. And when guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. Amen? This is the beginning of Jesus' sign Jesus did in Cana and Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. So let me just finish, go back upstairs again. Huh? So he said, when the guests are well drunk. So the best was preserved. Usually early one, earlier one, the best wine could have But why you preserve? So all these years, now talking about Old Testament journey, they, they preserve this the best produce of God. Template. Talking about Jesus. 
and wait at the uh, last part. At the end, you are giving me, giving the people the best wine. Amen? So what do you see? What, what is the revelation here? You see the six spot. Six is the number of men. Number of men. On the sixth day, God created man. The pot vessel, earthen pot speaks about humanity. Man with no water inside speaks about no word. Right? So now for, to, to have revelation, you must have water. So Jesus said, pour the water. And then when he scooped and served, what was hidden now being revealed? What was hidden? Revealed. The water becoming wine. Now what does this got to do with our life? We need revelation to finish our mandate. The church needs the revelation. The church needs kephas, the stone. We need revelation. And for us, what we need, for, to, to have revelation, it begins from where? Jesus immediately pointing out, take the earthen pot, chosen vessel, a person, fill that person with water. Then I can do the rest. Because he is the revelation. So God is telling, he will reveal himself, Jesus, I will reveal myself to those who carry the word of God. So waiting for the last part, you know, right now where we are now is filling up the pot. So the, the, the day that you filled up with the water, with the knowledge of God, the word of God, then revelation will pour out from there. All that you carry in you will become a revelation of God, who God is. Your life will become the revelation of God. We are the revelation of God. Jesus is the prototype to it, to give us that access. We are the best being saved by God for the end time. We are the best wine saved for God. Jesus is the revelation of who God is. Now that revelation now it has been transferred to us. Now we, as we migrating into the word, we will become the revelation of this unseen God to the world. And we are the best wine being saved for the coming generation. Write that down and that's it. I stop here. You understand? We, we just read the scripture. We are now going back in to understand what was the intention of God. The word was with God. The, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Manifested. So all this word was the intention of God. Became voice. Voice became word. And the word manifested in human. You and I, when we fill with the water, we will now become the manifestation of who God is. That is true church. That's a true church. Amen? So I really pray that you will understand what is being taught. I really pray that because a new movement is happening in the earth, God is rebuilding his body. Anything which is not in line with the word, any pot that does not have water inside cannot be used to serve wine. You understand? So these pots must be filled with water. This is a place where you are being filled with water. This is not a place of wine. This is a place of water. Because what has been given to us is to give the water. But it is His power, the Holy Spirit, His power to turn the water to wine. He will reveal. It's not my job. I'm not giving you the revelation. It's the Holy Spirit is the one who's giving you the revelation. But I can boldly declare I'm the one who has been chosen to give you the water. Amen. Come, let's stand together. So next week we will okay, then this is the beginning where is this is the beginning of G the signs of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. See what he did? Through the miracle, he revealed the glory, image, or reputation of the Father. Whatever Jesus did, Jesus did not reveal himself. He revealed the Father. He revealed the name which was found inside him. That's the word. So through miracles, you see, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, 
So the sign of every miracle is to reveal the Father. You can do that at Canva also, right on your Facebook. The purpose, why? These are all the misunderstood in the church. The purpose of every miracle in the Bible is to reveal the glory of the Father. Glory of the Father. So you see, manifested, manifested Jesus. You see, he, through all the miracles, He manifested His glory and His disciples believed Him. They start to see this unseen God and they live according to that God. Amen? Okay, so next week we will come, we will continue after this. He went down to Capernaum and his mother and brother and whatever. We will do it next week. Let's close our eyes for a while. Let's close our eyes for a while. Thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord. Just thank Him for the word. Now you are being filled with water. You are being filled with water. You are full of water now to the brim. That means every system in you will come out from the word of God. You are to be the manifestation of the unseen God. Your life that you have has got a purpose and the purpose is to reveal the Father. You are not who you think you are. You are not what the society says. You are not what people talk about. You are whatever the Word of God says. You are the Son of God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in one, the one and only name. I declare your name over each and every one of us. We commit these days into your hands as we are journeying in the word. Lord, we need you to cover us because as we pursue the word, we, we realize and recognize things around us are getting very tough. But in the midst of this, Lord, we ask of your strength for us to remain faithful to your word. Allow us to continue to take this journey and help us to finish it. That this water will turn to wine. That many will come to know who you are through our lives. So I bless each and every one in this place, this room, all those who are hearing the recordings faithfully, the teachings, and let their life be transformed, reformed to reveal your glory. So I bless them, bless them all, Father, in the name which was found in Jesus. Amen. Amen. The offering.